Hi, Joy Olson, Blockbuster Fundraising. Can you believe it's August? Wow, the dog days of August are really up on us. Well, you know, August is a fundraiser's very important month. It means a lot to all of us to be able to do certain things in August that are going to set us up beautifully for year end. And Veritas Group, I love Veritas Group, and I'm sure you do too. Richard Perry and Jeff had a wonderful blog about what they suggest major gift fundraisers get organized in the month of August. And this is really great advice for all of us, whether you're the major gift officer or the development director. So for major gift fundraisers, traditionally the month of August was always a little bit of relaxation time. Oh, not anymore. While you do need to take some time to rest, Veritas Group believes it's one of the more crucial months for your work. Why? Because while many of your donors are taking last minute vacations, August presents an opportunity for you to evaluate where you are and prepare for the last quarter of the year. In other words, August is the perfect time to get your head clear about where you're headed. Veritas Group developed a August checklist for their major gift peeps and let's borrow from that so that we are also ready as whether we're a major gift officer or development director that we're ready for the busiest time of our year. The number one item on Veritas Group's checklist is evaluate your portfolio. Major gift officer has a workload, a portfolio. Where are you so far this year relative to your revenue goals? Which donors are behind in their giving? Who can be asked for another gift in the fall? What donors are in jeopardy of not making their goals? Now for all of us fundraisers, we can organize our database right now in August. We can make sure that it's just in great working order for the last quarter of the year and year end. So you wanna start with obvious filters. Your, more, your most recent donors, the average donation, lifetime donations, seasonal giving history, the avid email opener yet to give, donation frequency, and you can filter people from these groups into demographic groups of income, gender, age, and location. Now, next, filter these records based on the type of communications response. Which call to action ended with a donation? Which calls to action were ignored? Yikes, stay away from those. So, social media, did that work? A personal phone ask, in-person meetup, email or a newsletter, a small gift for donation. And then finally, filter this segment of records into a category of giving. A hand-delivered donation with cash. That often happens, especially around uh, the end of the year, uh, Christmas time. A check or money order. A check in the mail. A credit card donation online or over the phone. PayPal. Know your list. Know its history. Learn and adapt based on this information. Edit the information regularly. Keep the records up to date. Purge any information that changes, like addresses, phone, email. This is critical. If your donor new moves to a new city, this is going to impact their giving patterns. And as soon as information changes, edit it in your database. Clean up your donor database. In the demographic section of your database, add notes based on your relationship with the donor. I think this is of strategic importance. 
For example, if you meet for brunch, add the when, where, and why. Also, add in any personal family history that they may have shared with you. This is crucial. They'll likely remember the last meeting more clearly than you. Don't offend them by not remembering things that are important to them. When you take notes, you'll be able to pin those personal notes mentioned above. Place these notes in your database records, so then you can write a note like this. Hey, Jeannie, it was lovely meeting you at Starbucks last fall. I'd love to catch up on your grandkids. Is Susie still taking ice skating lessons? I've been thinking about Susie and I'd love to hear how she's doing at Harvard this year. Isn't that wonderful? I, I think that they're going to feel very important, your donor that gets a message like this, and feel like you really care about the relationship, not just the gift, but you care about them. Let's talk about 10 ways to segment your donors to improve fundraising effectiveness. All right, the perfect August, perfect August goal. Once you've filtered out the bad leads and found the best possible donors, a loyal friend to your organization, learn from this relationship. Keeping up to date notes in your database will improve your odds of receiving donations and nurturing this relationship will help you understand the giving or non-giving patterns of the people in your database, in your records list. Don't waste time on donors that aren't going to give your dead leads. Focus on other records with similarities to this loyal donor to improve your fundraising effectiveness. All right, that was checklist item and number one, your database, your records. Get them efficient and ready to go. What is the second thing on your August checklist to get ready for year end. Veritas Group says this, start setting up meetings for the fall. You most likely will need to make a number of solicitations in the fall. Start setting up those meetings now. Get them on the calendar well in advance so you can prepare your ask strategy based on when you are meeting with them. Did you know that you're 85% on your way to securing a gift if you can get your prospect to agree to a visit? Hey, this is a truism that veteran major gifts fundraiser Gerald Panis wrote in his iconic book, Asking. It's just an absolutely fabulous book. He also says, if you want to milk a cow, sit by its side. This book, and uh, maybe we'll put it up on the screen for you right now, is absolutely wonderful about making the ask. But Gerald Panna says that once you get the appointment, you have, you have achieved and done the most difficult part of getting that major gift personal ask. The appointment is tough to get. So, like we said, if you want, he said, Gerald Panis, if you want to milk a cow, sit by its side. Well, the question here is, how do you get the cow to cooperate? <laughs> okay, and why is it so hard to get a visit with a prospect? Well, it just is. People screen their phone calls. They don't answer emails. They're busy, and let's face it, they know what this is about. Once you get in the room with them, you'll have a chance to win them over. But how to get there? Well, acknowledge to yourself that the hardest part of fundraising is definitely getting the visit. Once you accept this, you'll be less frustrated. There's nothing wrong with you if you're having a hard time getting through to someone. Everyone does. Persevere. 
try different channels until you find the one that works, whether it's the phone, email, text, social media, etc. Be donor centered. Everyone has their favorite communication method. For example, you may think a text is too intrusive, but that's your perspective and not your donors. For some folks, there is nothing more intrusive than a phone call because increasingly busy people don't want to talk to you in real time. So here are some specific tips that will help you get in the door. All right, are you ready? And these are actually nine secrets to, successful, to successfully getting the donor meeting. Remember, you're not setting an appointment, you're arranging a visit. Appointments are no fun. Doctors, mechanics, and dentists require appointments. Visits are fun. You'll chat, nosh, and have a lovely conversation. Yay! Start by asking your prospect if he or she has the time for your call. If you launch into trying to schedule a visit while your prospect's attention, your donor's attention, is on anything else, you, you risk failure. If your donor only has five minutes, say you'll take four and stick to it. Plan to first ask for advice. People love to give advice. No doubt, you've heard the old fundraising adage, if you want advice, ask for gifts. If you want gifts, ask for advice. It's true. So plan what you might say that will sound genuine to your particular donor. For example, You've had a lot of experience in this area. I'd love to bounce some ideas off you. Or how about this? You've really got your ear to the ground with this constituency. I'd value your feedback as to the best ways to approach this. Or, we know what we need to get done, but we're not clear on the best way to execute. You've always got creative ideas. Might I pick your brain? Good, huh? Don't plan to ask if you can drop by to tell them what your organization is doing. Successful fundraising is about getting to know what floats your donor's boat, not telling them what floats yours. So you want to begin by getting them talking. If they know you're genuinely interested in what they have to say, they'll not only be less defensive about accepting your offer to visit, they'll be genuinely open to you. Who doesn't like to dole out advice? They'll be complimented that you've asked them. Tell your donor why you're calling. If they're a former donor, begin by reminding them how much they're valued. Thank them for their previous gifts. People will do what they've done before. They already went through the decision process of whether or not to give to you. You're simply encouraging them to continue and perhaps to do so even more passionately. If they're a new donor, let them know they're valued for being a volunteer, a donor, a community leader, expert in their field, or whatever fits the bill. Then, whether a brand new prospect or a former donor, use your planned query about whether they'd be willing to meet to give you some sought-after advice. Be clear about your intention to talk about philanthropy. No one likes to be tricked. Explain you want to see them to one, get their feedback, advice on your new project or campaign as a longtime supporter, volunteer, or a community leader with an ear to the ground. And secondly, explore a giving opportunity. Ask when they can see you for 20 minutes at their convenience. Don't talk about the specific dollar amount yet. 
Save this for the in-person visit. And frankly, it may not come up until the second in-person visits. Major gift do uh, donation solicitations, hey, they take a while. And the most common objections to a visit run along the lines of, I don't want to talk about, I don't have money to give, I'm too busy to meet, I'll give, so you don't need to spend time with me. I'd love to meet, but I'm going on vacation. Why don't you call me when I get back? Ever notice how it's always vacation season for major donor prospects? How lucky you them. If this happens, promise you won't ask for money on this visit. Say you'd still appreciate their advice on your project or campaign. You value their input that much. Offer choices for timing of the visit. Don't let them tell you they'll think about it or get back to you. Offer two to three choices. They'll generally pick one. Keep the ball in your court. Then you can smile, stand up, and walk around. How you say something can be more important than what you say. So smiling, standing, and moving helps to convey enthusiasm in your speech. This really works. People like to talk to people who sound happy. When someone answers the phone, leap up and grin. I find it helps even to put a smile on my face when composing an email or text to secure a visit. It somehow ends up coming off more friendly. Strange but true. All right, third thing that you can do this month of August, according to Veritas Group, and they know, is to make sure that you are ready to send program impact reports to your donors in September by working with a program. So I thought that maybe we should take a second to talk about how to write an impact report. Some of you may have never done that, so that's pretty big if it's going to be on your September, September agenda. So let's look at uh, this topic of impact reports. How do your donors know that the money they give you is making a difference? The answer is they don't unless you tell them. Good impact reporting tells donors what their money achieves, but also appeals to outcomes focused funders and helps organizations to develop and refine their own strategy to increase their effectiveness. So this is extremely important to think about your impact report because you want to really get uh, your, your organization's impact so that your donors understand exactly what their money is doing. So there are five questions, for example, that can help make sure your reporting has a clear narrative for your donor, for the reader of your impact report. So here they, here they are. Number one for your impact report, what's the problem we're trying to tackle? Some problems are easy to describe. Preventable blindness, for example, and others require more explanation. This is your chance to tell potential donors why what you do is important. Tell them about the context in which you work and the needs of your beneficiaries. You need to make sure your donors understand the problem that you're addressing and the impact it has on people's lives so they appreciate why you need their help. Okay, secondly, for your impact report, what do we do to address it? Ad how do we address this problem? Explain your activities clearly. What do you do day to day to try to overcome the problem you explained in question one? 
This is fairly straightforward for smaller single-issue charities, but it can be tricky for large organizations which carry out multiple activities in a range of different areas. So you want to be very clear about the challenges you face when talking about the impact. They need, these need to fit together. Okay, question number three that you want to address in your impact report. What does that achieve? Many charities find this question particularly tricky. It requires you to look at the outcomes you are achieving and try to link them back to your activities, attributing changes to your work. How many cases of preventable blindness were prevented because of your charity? One way to think through the difference you make is to imagine what the world would look like if your charity wasn't there. Address that. You make a difference and you want to let your donors know what that difference is. Okay, fourth question that you need to address for your impact report is how do we know what we're achieving? You need to provide clear evidence to support claims about your outcomes. By evidence, we don't just mean complex measurement tools and randomized control trials. Good impact reporting includes a combination of case studies, anecdotal feedback, survey results, Web, st web stats and so on. So your impact reporting features should include real life stories from beneficiaries, high level facts and figures, and regular social impact reports, just to name a few. These give a comprehensive picture of your achievements and that is going to make a huge difference to your donors. So think about what is the right level of evidence for you because you don't want to collect a lot of unnecessary evidence. It's just a waste of time. Just because something is easy to measure doesn't mean it will tell you anything useful about your impact. All right, the fifth question that you want to ask yourself when putting together your impact report for your donors this fall is how are we learning and improving? Finally, you talk about the challenges you've faced, the problems you've overcome, and what you've learned from them as an organization. Many charities are currently missing an opportunity in their reporting to explain how they have confronted challenges and change their methods to become more effective as a result. Don't be afraid to talk about your failures as long as you can show your donors what you have learned from them. So I thought that this would you would really enjoy these uh, impact report tips because perhaps you've never done an impact report before, but I'll tell you if you are checking up on your competition and other nonprofits, impact reporting is becoming extremely, uh, it, it, it's out there and, and you need to be uh, competitive. You can't afford to fall behind and let other nonprofits become more meaningful to your donors. Have a good impact report. All right, what else can you do this month of August? to get ready for year end, according to Veritas Group. And this one's important. Meet and communicate with your program. What projects are you intending to ask your donors to fund? You've got to get this clear now. Make sure that you are in sync with your program services staff. Set up the expectation that you will need information budgets and stories, lots of stories to make those solicitation. So uh, heartfelt stories, stories with great impact. All right, next, to get ready for year end, 
Set up a meeting with your manager or your executive director. Review the donors that are in jeopardy and proactively discuss why. Either reset revenue expectations or change your strategy on how you can start turning it around. Don't wait until the very last minute to let your executive director know that revenue expectations might be changing. <laughs> you, they need to know now if there's any problem at all. Okay, next, what can you do right now in August to get ready for year end? Hey, Faraday's group says, evaluate your strategic plan. Now is the time to review your October to December strategic plan and change it if you need to. They say, plans are not sacred. They are meant to be changed if something is not working or you have better ideas. And you know, when you're a fundraiser and you're watching what everybody else is doing and reviewing and thinking, it's... Chances are you've got a lot of great ideas and some of them are going to be better ideas. Let's talk about them. Get them in the plan. All right. What else can you do? What should be on your checklist this August to make sure that you have great year-end fundraising success? Thank donors. August is a great time to send thank you notes and postcards because a donor isn't expecting it and everything should be handwritten. So for your major gift peeps, Veritas Group thinks this is, should be on your checklist and so does Joy at Blockbuster Fundraising. So, so important. Let that gratitude show through. It will be unexpected and it will be so appreciated and it will really delight your donors. All right, and there one last bit of advice for August is this. Take one Friday off. Seriously, you work hard. Take a Friday off in August and get away from the office because you'll be a lot more productive on Monday. All right, I'm going to uh, give you a link to this checklist. And this is why August is of strategic importance. And if you can complete these tasks, oh boy, you're going to have a wonderful fourth quarter. You're going to be ready for a fabulous uh, year-end giving success. So I say good luck to you. Have a, have a wonderful, productive, efficient August. Stay well. Stay happy. Hopefully you'll get a little last-minute uh, summer vacation in for yourself and your family. You can find out a lot more about fundraising tips at joyolsongroup.com, blockbusterfundraising.com. We have hundreds of free fundraising video tips on our Blockbuster YouTube channel. And of course, we're here live on Facebook every Tuesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. We are enjoying our IGTV channel on Instagram, so join us there. And in the meantime, we're wishing you the very best fundraising success. Thanks for having been here. Bye-bye.